Good morning. Hello, hello. Is there anybody out there? All right. How are you guys going? Thanks for tuning in. Have some pretty cool stuff to show you today. We're going to work on something different. Hey, Philip. Life size dolls. Mankahu, Makahu. <laughs> you guys have some, have some funny usernames. Alrighty. Um, so, look. Um, hey, Javier. How's it going? Good to have you here. Um, so the the creature that you can see on screen right now is something that I uh, did with the creature pack. Um, I'm gonna talk about that in just a second and what like why I did it, what is it for, how how you can use it, and yeah, uh, we're gonna work with that basically. So last stream we worked on the cassowary type of creature. Well, very close to the to, to the real thing. Um, the idea was to continue with that today, but you know, um, I just released the pack, so I thought I could give you a quick rundown of, of what it is, and and that might take up uh, the entire stream. But we might get to you know work on something else. Uh, I mean, the cast I worry again. So uh, I'm just gonna leave. I'm I'm gonna <laughs> allow for some minutes to get some more people in, um, so I don't have to you know repeat this part. Um, but it, it's pretty straightforward. I just wanna make sure everyone knows what I'm talking about. <laughs> All right, let's do this. So, um, yeah, so this guy, this creature that you can see on screen is a full character. As in, you know, it has, you know, from the from the legs to the to the head and some extra weird stuff. Um, and it's a sketch that took me about 10 to 15 minutes to put together. And it is essentially, um, a medley like a mix and match of like these different pieces that come with the pack that um, you can basically get yourself and try to do the same thing so if you want to follow along you can also get the pack or if you already got the pack um, thanks for that and also you can follow along with what we're gonna do today so for those who don't have an idea of what I'm talking about I just released a pack that is a collaboration with a few other serious artists and they have provided some amazing pieces, some really cool meshes, and I'm gonna go through them again. I'm just trying to bring in the website. So um, here is the creature pack, and you can go to the Sewers Guides website. It's gonna be you know the first thing that you'll see in there. It's a pack that is going to be available for limited time. And I'll explain why in just a second. Uh, so you have about 17 days to get this pack, and then it's gonna be gone for good. Um, this pack is is kind of like a an, an effort to help um, alleviate a little bit of the you know the financial strains of the bushfires in Australia or like the the fire brigade in Australia. So the idea was to uh, you know bring uh, a few Sewers artists. They want to contribute and, and collaborate, and we put together a, a pack that has a hundred pieces, um, and as an insert, insert multi mesh brushes, and the pack is only twenty bucks, and you can you can just get it from the from the website, and all the proceedings, all the all the profit that this pack makes, is going to be donated at the end of the month of this month to the CFA. Um, so it's all in the website. You can just go ahead and read it. There's links to the CFA. The CFA is the Country Fire Authority in Australia. It's one of the largest um, volunteer-based organizations like that, that they'll help with um, with disasters like the ones that are ha currently happening here in Australia. The the devastation is pretty, is pretty sad. Um, but because they're volunteers as well, they also relied on, um, you know, donations and and that sort of thing. So uh, I thought this would be a good way for the Sirius community to um, to help out a little bit. It's not going to be much, but you know, at least we we'll try to do our part. 
Uh, so yeah, um, all I did really was just to put it together. Um, I mean, this is a, a joint effort, and of course, if everyone collaborates and everyone you know chips in, <laughs> it's gonna be everyone's everyone's effort. So that's why the pack is only limited for 17 days because this is kind of like a there's a time limit. <laughs> the idea is to be able to donate the money as soon as possible because it is very urgent. Um, but yeah, you can just go here, have a look at what it comes with. Um, as I said, there are basically 100 meshes organized in three in five insert multi mesh brushes for Zebras 2020. Uh, by the way, the CFA or the Fire Country uh, Fire Country Fire Authority, it's um, it's here's the website. It's all linked in the in the website, and this is what uh, I'm gonna be donating all the the profits to. Um, so it comes with these five uh, brushes, and here you can see all of the different meshes that come with. There's some pretty weird weird stuff because. Um, Ashley, Ashley donated some of her brushes, uh, some, some of her um, meshes. Um, she's another live streamer. Also, Michael Pavlovich. So you can expect some weird stuff there. Uh, there's some really cool and, and nice and, you know, refined meshes as well that Anna Carolina provided. Uh, you know, some th there's, there's a bunch of stuff that um, I'm going to show you in just a second. But here you can basically, you know, cycle through all of them. Um, so you have heads, torsos, um, arms, and, you know, um, arms and hands, um, legs, and just like miscellaneous that have like you know tails, fins, uh, horns, that sort of thing. So they're organized kind of like in that in that way. Um, you can also see kind of like a, a quick overview of how I use the pack to create a bunch of different, um, you know, a couple of sketches uh, just to show like how quick it is and how um, how cool. The creatures that you can make are uh, this is the one that I'm showing you at the moment in this in the live stream and here's where you can get the pack so like I said it's 20 bucks all the um, all the profits are gonna be donated at the end of the month and here at the bottom you can see uh, these are some of the links to the artists that contributed to this pack so you can just click on any of them and it will take you to their respective um, art station all right so I'm gonna put this link here Let's have a look. All right. Already. So, again, so this guy was created with the with the brushes, and I already have the brushes loaded into ZBrush. Let me turn off the chat for a second. There we go. So um, these five uh, ignore the other. The other ones on the right. Um, these five brushes are the ones that basically make up the pack, um, and you'll see the icon has certain parts highlighted. So the horns is the miscellaneous ones, the, the legs obviously the legs, and so on and so forth. Um, so when you download it, it comes as a zip file. You just need to unpack it and bring it into ZBrush. And to load it into ZBrush, uh, ZBrush 2020, you have to just double click the the brushes, and they will just load. Right, let me see if there's any questions. Cool, all right. So, um, yeah. So this is made out of the, the, the different parts. I'm gonna turn on polyframe so you can see which parts it this is made out of. Um, and it's really, really fun to just build concepts. So the idea of the pack is to very quickly produce a you know, a creature or a character or just a, a weird thing that um, will serve as a proof of concept or sorry, a prototype. So you can, you know, visualize it, get it ready there. Um, I mean, ready as in have a, a mesh that you can work on and then you can refine it as much as you want to. But it's really quick to just get ideas out, out of your head um, or just use certain parts in some more, you know, more pre-designed um, I seem pretty sad. How can I how can I put this in a more um, if you're copying from a, from another concept, you can utilize some of these parts as well into that and and you know refine it to suit that concept. Uh, but the idea is just to create, um, have fun with it, and create stuff with it. So I have already. Let me just get out of solo mode. Um, I have isolated some of the parts. Just want to make sure you can see them all, or most of them. 
So these are the different parts that I use uh, to create this this character. Um, hang on a second, just keep watching today. We'll prototype in the pack, or will they be creative work too? Um, so there's gonna be both. Yep. So yeah, basically th those are the different meshes. So I just want to show you so you can see uh, the ones that I use are exactly the parts that are that come with the pack. Um, so I'm just going to go through some techniques, uh, some of the things that I found useful when I'm doing kit bashing with this type of things. How do I use them? Um, and hopefully we can do something, you know, show you that that you can actually use this for a for a completed work, like to actually render it, maybe do some poly paint and that sort of thing. So I'm going to go into solo mode. Um, this right now, because the, the parts haven't been merged in a, in a way as in they're not part of the same topology, I can basically hold control and shift and select, for example, the arms. And you see these are just the arms, right? Or I can select the chest and isolate it, right? That is because each one, each one of these pieces have its own polygroup and it's not part of the same mesh. So um, what you can do after you put everything together is turn that into a Dynamesh. So this is now a Dynamesh that has all the details and you can just work as this as, as normal. Um, and then you can just do a retopology, project all the details and you know take it even further if you want to, animate it, whatever you want. So it, it can be taken, I mean, th this whole chat before we actually get do, uh, get to do the, the practical stuff is just to um, reiterate that although this is kind of like a kit batch to create concepts and, and put things together very quickly, it can also be um, something that could take into, you know, more production or, you know, push it to the next level and create a production ready character um, fairly simple. Okay, um, let's go ahead and start with the kit bashing and see how long, how far we can take it. So I'm going to select a sphere, make it a polymesh 3D. I'm going to turn the lines for the polyframe as well. Uh, and this is going to be the placeholder where we can put things in. I'm going to activate symmetry and I'm, I have already selected the torso. Um, you can start with anything, but I have the torso selected and I have a bunch of different options. All right. So again, I like to just start with one, play with the different shapes. Um, and another thing that I should mention, let's let's just go with, with this one. So you can just click and drag. Let's go ahead and turn off polyframe. Um, let's bring in the Gizmo 3D center to the unmask areas with the little location icon. And we can just place this in the center, it doesn't matter. Um, that sphere is going to be separated anyway. So as soon as you drag something in with the IMM brush, uh, Sirius is automatically going to mask out everything else but the new inserted mesh. So I can just go ahead and bring in my custom palette and click split on mask points. And that for you guys should be under the split sub palette here. And I'm just going to select the the torso, turn off the the sphere. And now my torso is kind of like the, the new piece that I can attach things to it. So it just makes more sense that I have just the, the sphere all the time and then separate it and, you know, put it all together. Um, let's have a look and see what else we can do. So let's say that I'm happy with this, but I want to try a different, you know, different type of torso for the top. So I'm going to select this one, click and drag. And it's just a matter of reposition the pieces, right? And if you combine a few of them, it's obviously going to create um, something something more unique, something that is more, you know, uh, better design or not better design. Let me just don't do that. I just made a mistake. Um, I had symmetry enabled, so I need to turn this off. Select the center um, to the unmask areas, and now I can be, I can scale it in the uh, proportionally. All right, so you can do this step by step, or you can insert one mesh, adjust it to fit the shape. Then, once you're ready, 
bring in another one and continue and so on and so forth or you can just attach everything that you kind of like think you want and then come back and tweak it so i'm just gonna do that it's gonna be easier obviously there's some pieces that they don't feel as connected and that's kind of like the idea of what i'm gonna go um over after uh let's go ahead and change that the the brushes to heads and we have a bunch of different heads um, we can go for a creature type of creature type of uh, I don't know <laughs> like an animal creature let's see what we can I mean you can go for this is one of the um, Anna's heads Anna, Anna Carolina's head so it's pretty cool right so you can do something like this very quickly uh, but the reason I just want to do that is so I, I can show you that you can cycle through the different heads uh, once you play something so I just went ahead and dragged in these kind of like tiger um, saber tooth saber saber tooth tiger uh, but if I select before I release or get rid of the mask if I select the gizmo 3d right uh, with the gizmo 3d selected I can go ahead and maybe just move this out of the way holding the alt key uh, so that you can see more of the head and I can just click through the different heads Ah, oh, actually, I have to leave it there. <laughs> All right, so I can cycle through the different heads. So that's a good way to just show you what comes with the pack, but also to figure out what type of creature I'm doing, right? So this looks already pretty weird. I think this might be an interesting, an interesting option. Let's have a look at different ones. So these ones... Well, this one is pretty creepy and it might be interesting. Um, so I have a couple of ideas of something that I can go for. Maybe this one as well. Actually, I don't mind this one. I think this one could be an interesting weird creature. But yeah, you have like you have a, you have a bunch of different options, right? And you can see just by changing the different um, the different meshes, you can you can really tell that there's gonna be I mean you can go in a whole bunch of different ways right so this is more like a sci-fi alien creature or you can go for something more creepy like this uh, and it's just a matter of changing something so I think I'm gonna I'm gonna give this one a go I just wanna position this in place I think I'm gonna give it a bit more of a neck Okay, and I think I'm gonna remove the mask and just rotate everything a little bit so it feels more more natural. Cool. All right, um, let's go ahead and use maybe some of the miscellaneous parts, the ones with the horns, um, and there's some good options here that we can maybe this from Michael I'm gonna turn on symmetry so this is kind of like the the jaw of this creature and I see some activity there uh, in the chat just give me one second I'll get to it in just a second. Right, so, so far so good. We're creating a, a weird looking creature but a, with a bunch of different meshes. Uh, let me see what's in the chat. How do you get so much energy to create so much work? <laughs> um, I, I, I don't sleep much, to be honest. I have insomnia, so. I go to sleep and then I start thinking about things and then I keep thinking about them and then I decide to just get up and try them <laughs> and then I spend a lot of time there. Hey Alex, um, sh shooter, shooter. Um, do you have your own serious brushes? Yeah, I have a bunch of serious brushes. Um, some of the, like most of my brushes 
I share them, if not all of them. Uh, all of my brushes are available uh, in the Serious Guides website. If you go to the resource page, uh, to the brushes section, you can have a bunch of like free brushes that I shared online. Also, I have some packs that you can get as well. So I do a bunch, I do have a bunch of different brushes. So Kasawari, yeah, we're gonna try to do the Kasawari later today. Um, I just wanted to show you a quickly, you know, a quick overview of the of the process and how I use this pack, the new pack that I released yesterday. Um, and then we're gonna jump into the Kasawari. Alrighty. Cool. So uh, I'm going to bring in some arms. And I'm going to make sure that I have um, the symmetry activated. And I think I'm going to make, I'm going to make use of different, um, different arms. So for example, I can bring in something like this. Let's drop it in there. Obviously, we need to increase the size of this this guy. Oh, by the way, this is something um very useful. If you um if you start scaling this like so, you see that the pivot shifts a little bit. Uh, and that is because you are scaling with symmetry enable and it's trying to do it from the center line. So if you want to maintain the pivot or, or scale from the pivot, you can enable this local symmetry. So if you go to transform palette, um, should be here. So this L sim is local symmetry. If you activate that, then it's going to do it from this point. Um, it's more evident if you're doing something like, a, um, I don't know, like a cube or, or something like this and you scale it in, let's say in the Z axis with the normal activate symmetry uh, enable. So this is what's gonna happen, right? It's gonna try to scale it from the center point, not from the local um, volume. So if you activate local symmetry, it's going to do it from whatever you have the uh, the gizmo. So I use that quite a bit, or I switch between the two when I'm doing these type of things. And right, so let's say we're happy with the placement over there. Um, we can use something like uh, Sculptress Pro. So I'm gonna increase my brush size, hold shift, and I have Sculptress Pro enabled. And one of the good things about this process is that Sculptress Pro works with uh, the mask. You know, if you have anything masked, you still can work with uh, Sculptress Pro. So I'm gonna remove the hands, uh, as in I don't, I don't wanna work with the hands. So all I have to do is this and that's it so I have only the upper arm and then for the forearm I can bring something else so let's go ahead and bring in this guy and let's move it into place Right, so I think that looks more interesting. Um, of course, we can tweak things later um, after we finish putting things together, as in building the base of this creature. Uh, let's go ahead and bring in some legs now. Um, we can go for something extra weird. Let's try. Let's try some of this. This is gonna be too thin for this type of creature. So I don't think it, wor it, it works. Let's try something a bit, a bit thicker. Hmm. I think we're gonna go for some simple legs. Oh. Well, let's try to yeah let's try to do something weird <laughs> so this is another one that it's pretty cool and it gives some very weird results all 
and I think for this one we might need to just duplicate this so I'm gonna hold control and click and drag and I think I'm gonna do that one more time control click and drag and I think there is something cool in the torsos that we can bring in so we can use maybe some of this all right this is pretty weird <laughs> I think um, I'm gonna add some extra stuff in the head like some horns maybe and then I'm gonna show you the the rest of the process uh, of tweaking this quick character that's not what I wanted um, let's see let's go for this All right. So I didn't, um, I didn't really think too much about the design, and, and I know this needs a little bit of tweaking, but um, overall, this gives you a very quick starting point to create something that looks very intricate as a concept or as a you know concept sculpt, um, and then you can go ahead and tweak it. So I have sculptures enabled. I can turn that on and off whenever I want to. Um, and then the next step, once I put everything together, for me would be to just go ahead and tweak the shapes and make sure that, um, you know, they all feel part of the same and not just a bunch of insert meshes, right? And that's generally speaking the case with uh, when you're using Kitbash for this type of thing, that everything, every relation of every, every part uh, should feel part of the same character, the same design. Um, and that's some, sometimes hard to do with random um, Kitbash meshes because some of them are going to be very different uh, so you have to just sort of compensate tweak them a bit and maybe do more sculpting in one or simplify some of them so let's go ahead and bring in the move topological brush and this is a single a single mesh right uh, let's get rid of the line so at this point this is very similar to what I had here first right it's just a bunch of insert meshes obviously this one have already I have already tweaked the shapes to to fit kind of like the entire uh, mesh but this one is is as it is <laughs> um, and now because we have different polygroups and everything there's no continuity in the topology we can use the move topological brush to adjust things on the fly really quickly so the first thing I want to do is probably adjust these forms they are a bit too too big or too thick just so that it doesn't have as much visual weight um, especially because the rest of the body is relatively thin so this is just a quick adjustment of the shapes I'm gonna do the same thing here for the torso make it a bit thicker especially here at the back and try to find a way to make an interesting transition between what we currently have here at the top and this weird uh, this weird part that we put at the back or like yeah I don't know if it's I don't know how to call it the the, <laughs> the bottom part of the torso let's try to find a way to also fit in those deltoids here Uh, another tool that I like to use as well with this process is to enable the Accu curve, and the Accu curve works really nicely with this because uh, it gives you a more pointy effect, of course. And let's try to adjust the shape of the head as well, just so that so that it fits or it suits this type of horns, so it has some kind of um, structure.
I mean, with this process, I try to do as a, I mean, I try to get it right <laughs> um, in the first try, if that makes sense. But this is something that I just go back and forth until I find something that I think looks good. And most of the time, to be honest, I just go like, you know what, this doesn't work. And then I just delete it. Like, for example, if I don't like the horns thing, they're like just not working. I can just hold control and shift to isolate them because they're different polygroups, invert that, and then just delete it. I think in this case, yeah, it's not working. So I'm just going to delete hidden. And I'm just going to work on the, on the head a little bit more. All right, and let's have a look and see how we can fit in some of these legs. It's a, it's a very weird looking creature. <laughs> All right, so I'm just gonna try to make sense of how these legs join the torso. So after using the, the insert brush um, to add these details or to add the, the parts, it becomes just a matter of moving pieces with the move brush and the move topological. Um, and after that, you know, you can go nuts with the details and refining the shapes. Right, so I think this is, this is all right. It looks very, very weird. Um, but then you can go ahead and further tweak the shapes and the transitions. So the transitions is one of the things that I find to be very important to get right, especially when you do this type of kit bashing before you move into, you know, more dynamishing and, and that sort of thing. So for instance, here, this is kind of like a hole in here, but I want to try to make it more of a pictorial that, that inserts properly into the humerus. So I will bring probably the clay builder brush and then just work across the two subtools. So I'm going to turn on polyframes so you can see uh, these are two different polyframes or two different groups, ID groups or meshes. I'm going to turn it off um, and then I'm just going to start sculpting, right? But the clay builder brush is really cool because it just doesn't care whether you have one or two meshes overlapping, whatever that is. Um, it's just going to create this nice transition. So although these are two different meshes, this is building up the volume. It just, I just, I think zero just frozen for, for a second, just freeze for a second. Um, but yeah, so all of these transitions, for example, here that you can clearly see the line, this is what I would spend the rest of the time just doing these type of things. Now there's some points, and this is another part of the of the workflow that I wanted to show you. There's some some parts like in this one here, where you might find a, a big difference between one mesh and the other insert mesh. So if I turn this line, maybe you see in this area there's not enough geometry, and in this area there's quite a bit of geometry. So this is a good example of where you can use the Sculptures Pro to add a little bit of geometry and then sculpt in. So I'm gonna go ahead and enable Sculptures Pro. And I'm going to hold shift to smooth this area. Um, actually, a good tip would be to disable the C intensity in the shift or the smooth brush. So with the Sculptures Pro enable, I'm going to right click on the canvas um, and then I have the intensity. So if I turn this intensity to zero now, oh, sorry, not this one, I made a mistake. Holding shift, right? So if you hold shift to access the smooth brush, right click then you have C intensity to 100. So mean, meaning that Sirius is going to use 100% C intensity when you smooth. So if I reduce this to zero and make sure that I have Sculptures Pro enabled, uh, what Sirius is going to do is simply change the geometry. It's basically a, a topology brush. 
uh, because it's not going to affect any, it's not going to smooth anything out. So I can just go ahead and do this around here. And that's just adding a tiny bit of extra topology that we can use, especially just in the, in the, in the connection of these two meshes, right? So now we have more geometry. We can toggle Sculptures Pro off and we can bring in the Clay Builder brush again. Oops, I think I, yeah, I removed this intensity of the Clay Builder brush. I think it was 20 by default. All right, so now it makes more sense and it has more, I mean, Zero has more polygons in this area, this mesh has more polygons. So now we have more resolution in a way to work with. But this is still like different pieces, right? We can separate them, we can readjust them, we can, um, for instance, this area here, you can go ahead and use the the move topological brush to push it in, or you can hold control and shift to select this one. So you'll see this is the part that is being selected. You can mask by holding control and click on the canvas, control and shift, click to, be, uh, to bring everything back. We can hold control and click on the canvas to invert it. And now we can hold the alt key and just push this in like so, right? You can clear the, the mask and continue adjusting. So there's different ways, different, I guess, um, methods or steps that you can follow in this kit bashing technique. But for the most part, it's fairly simple or well, like the, the type of process that you could follow is pretty simple. It's just inserting the meshes and, um, you know, play around with the designs and ultimately that's what you're doing, right? Just, just designing as you go. And I think this is a very powerful technique in ZBrush. So I'm gonna do a bit more of this in here, making sure that the transitions are working a bit better. And refining those volumes. But I think that's that's pretty much it. I mean, the head can the head could do with some refinement as well. Let's just concentrate on the transition first, and then we can work on the overall shape. This is kind of like a blocking with already with details in a way, um, which sometimes could be could be hard uh, if you're used to just blocking and making sure that silhouette is, you know, great and perfect before you move on. I'm going to bring in the move brush, the normal move brush. So the normal move brush is not going to respect the, uh, the geometry. So I can just make this kind of like proportional changes, taking into account all the different parts, which is great. And that's why I sort of like switch between the move brush and the move topological to do this, these sort of things. All right, I think I need to push this, the head a little bit. Give it more some, um, I don't know, maybe some more of the muscles here at the back, just exaggerate them a little bit. So at this point, I'm just thinking about the design as well as the, as the visual way that each part has really. So it's like a bit of the silhouette. So let's bring in the silhouette a little bit closer. So it's a little bit of the silhouette, uh, but also trying to figure out like if this weird creature would actually exist in the real world, um, how would it function? Like how the different limbs would move and, and that sort of thing. So this one has kind of like an elbow here. So it will bend this way, uh, which is, you know, it's interesting. Uh, but you probably want to have this rotated around. So those are the type of things that you could think about while you design like how this guy functions what is the the functionality of the design and this is just it could be a matter of doing little tweaks or like little you know not just what I'm doing to refine the the silhouette or it might uh, you might require to just go back and, and really think about it and bring back something else
but I think this is this is looking good. All right, so I'm gonna refine the bottom part of the head. I'm gonna bring in the move topological again so that I can push this in or maybe push this out as well. And this sort of like fits nicely and creates this kind of like paneling, which is, is cool. Kind of like it. All right. Now that I look at this, let's go ahead and turn off the perspective. Um, I think the maybe the the hands are the ones that are not working, as in they don't they kind of like fit the fit the creature or the idea of the creature. But I think we can do something a bit more interesting. So I'm gonna go ahead and hold Control and Shift, click on those, invert that, and I'm gonna delete those. So now I don't have forearms. I'm gonna bring in the creature pack, and I think I'm gonna insert a leg instead of an arm. So this is uh, a pretty cool, weird one from Ashley. Let's see, is it in here? No, it's in the legs. So this this thing here. All right, so that's more like this creature, right? I think so. Um, so in this case, I just inserted this this new piece, but I don't want to use the entire thing. I just want to use the forearm and these like nice looking claws, uh, which by the way, I just went ahead and cut them individually. So I cut just the kind of like the claw and that's what I use in this other creature. So you see these claws here, or the nails of this guy, those are just uh, clipping of this other mesh. So let's say I just want to use the forearm and have him like this in this kind of like pose. I don't want to have any of this, so I'm going to bring in again my smooth brush that has no C intensity. I'm going to enable Sculptris Pro and with a large brush so that it's faster, I'm going to go ahead and delete this. Oh, you know what? Um, I probably need some intensity, <laughs> otherwise it's just going to uh, remove, or it's not going to remove, it's just going to change the topology, but it's not actually smoothing things out. So now it's working better. And this is one of the things that I really love about Sculptures Pro, that you can basically remove and delete things on the fly like this very quickly. All right. There's some holes in here, uh, which I'm gonna fix by holding Control and click and drag to remove the mask. And I'm gonna go to close holes. Uh, for you guys, should be on the, the, the um, what's the name? Modify topology. So geometry palette, modify topology, close holes, and that should you know close those holes in here. I'm gonna mask this again and embed it because there was just um, some holes that were being created in there and I'm going to bring in the move brush and I'm just going to push this closer together so that it's faster all right and that hole in here or this area I'm just going to bring in or I can just hold shift actually and simplify it since we have Sculptures Pro enable and I think that's that's fair enough. So now we have the forearm very quickly and we can go ahead and center this or reposition the pivot by holding Alt. And let's go ahead and put this in place. I'm gonna make it larger as well. So this is another good way to um, not only, I think this is inverted, 
Um, yeah, so this should be maybe like that. It makes more sense because of the shape of the of the forearm. All right, so something like that, and of course, we can go ahead and bring in the move brush. In this case, it could be the the top the move topological or the normal move brush because I haven't got rid of the mask, so I can take advantage of that. And just try to integrate this a little bit better. I'm going to invert the mask so that now these claws are masked. And I'm going to push in or extend these biceps a bit more. All right, I'm going to clear that mask. And now this, this creature, I think it looks much better now. Um, and let's go ahead and use the clay builder brush without Sculptress Pro. Although, let's have a quick check. Uh, we might need some resolution here so we can blend this a little bit better. So let's go ahead and bring in the smooth brush without any um, scene intensity and the Sculptress Pro. By the way, you can actually save this, right? If this is something that, use, uh, that you can use constantly, rather than changing the scene intensity and all that, just make sure that um, you set up the smooth brush the way that you want it, with or without intensity, and save it as a new brush. And I'm just going to add a bit more of topology here. And on this side as well. Maybe here at the back. Cool. And maybe a, a bit more here. And that's it. We can go ahead now and switch to the clay buildup. And start working on the shapes. And how to really just in the integration. It's all about transition in between one shape and the other. All right, and I'm going to bring in the move brush as well. And I'm just going to readjust this. So it's maybe a little bit fatter than what I wanted this muscle here. Cool, and let's just go ahead and exaggerate this a bit more. All right, and I feel like this creature could have something similar, like a like a big set of fangs or something like that. Um, so I'm gonna show you another process or another tool that you can use in this process of kit bashing. Um, so I'm gonna select this this area here or you know we could we could do we can do different things i'm going to show you a simple way to do it uh, that would be just duplicating the entire mesh so now i have two sub tools that are exactly the same that have the entire mesh i'm going to go into so make sure that i'm in solo mode and i'm going in this in the duplicate that i just created i'm going to hold control and shift and i'm going to select my select select lasso and i'm going to reutilize one of these claws so i'm going to Select that and hide any any piece that I might not need, like so, right? And let's go ahead and clear or delete hidden. So now we have this single piece that we can readjust and reposition the way that we wanted to, as if it was just another insert. Uh, but before I do that, I want to go ahead and close holes, right? So that we can close this. And now this is a watertight mesh, and I'm gonna hold. Shift, make sure that Sculptress Pro is enabled, and I'm just going to very quickly soften these edges here. Although you might not even see them, but it's always good. Um, in fact, you can just add another or add this to your existing set of uh, insert brushes, right? So you can just, as as this is like a simple or a, a individual, this is an individual mesh now. So you can go ahead and bring in the Gizmo 3D and reposition it in, you know, in this way. So I can just go ahead and move that ar uh, around and, and put it. Let's bring it back the guy. 
right? We can go ahead and scale it, move it around and reposition it the way that you wanted to. Or you can use this, which is just a clipping of one of the, um, the existing IMM brushes that come with the pack and repurpose it and create another brush or, or another detail that you can add to the brush. So if I want to do that, which is pretty simple, I'm just going to show you in case you don't know. Um, I don't, I don't need the two of them. I just need one. So I'm going to probably going to turn off symmetry and get rid of this one by holding control and shift. And then without letting go of the click, I'm going to press alt and that's going to hide um, the selection and I'm going to delete hidden. So now we only have this one, right? Now, in order to create an insert mesh brush, it's pretty simple. We can just go ahead and position the camera the way that we want to insert it from, the, the, one, the way that we want to insert the mesh from. So in this case, I want to insert the mesh from this uh, back area. So I'm going to position the camera here and I can just go ahead and click. Uh, let's hold on a second. Doing an autosave. I'm going to click on the brush palette and Oh, you cannot see it in in the in the recording, but um, here at the bottom, there is a create insert mesh. So it's around here. It's being covered by the camera and the and the bottom ribbon of the live stream. But there's a button here called create insert mesh. So if I click on that, Siri is going to ask me what I want to do with that. I'm going to click on new, and now I have a single mesh, which is a an insert brush. So I can click and drag, and you see now I have this new mesh or this new insert brush. Now, if I want to add this to the current brush that I have, um, I would prefer to just create a new set, like with maybe smaller pieces, for example. But if I want to add to an existing brush, like for example, I want this claw to be part of um, the, the miscellaneous brush, right? All I need to do is click on the brush again and click on create insert mesh. Again, the same thing. But instead of creating new, I just want to click append. So if I click append, uh, I'm going to get another pop-up. You cannot see it in here, um, which just gives you two options. Skip it until the next re restart or OK. So I'm going to click OK. And now this should be at the bottom. Yeah. Oh, I made a mistake <laughs> because um, I should have just inserted just one. Um, if that happens to you, you can delete any, any mesh within a custom IMM brush that you're creating by, you know, just selecting the one that you want. You can go to brush. I'm going to dock the brush palette to the right so you can see what I'm doing. And here on the decreate sub palette, this one here, you can delete mesh, right? So I have this one selected. You can just select whatever, select this one, and I'm going to click delete mesh. And that's it. It is sort of like get rid of that mesh that you inserted. So I'm going to undo a couple of times this mesh until I have this single claw or fang or whatever this piece is. I'm going to click on the brush and I'm going to click on create insert mesh append. And that's it. So now this is part of the brush, right? So I can do this sort of thing, right? So I'm going to select this one and let's go ahead and get rid of this subtool or, or hide it and go back to our creature. And with symmetry enabled, I'm going to go ahead and add some fangs from here. So I'm going to click and drag. Oops, maybe from this angle, click and drag. There we go. Bring in the gizmo. And just going to try to find a way that this sort of makes sense. I think that works, um, at least from a silhouette point of view. Uh, I just need to work on the profile a little bit. I'm going to turn off the cam and the silhouette or thumbnail. So in this case, I just want to have the the rotation or the, the curvature inverted. So what I can do um, is bring in the move brush and just do this by hand. Um, another thing we can do would be to split it and use the deformation. So for example, I'm going to go ahead and split on mask points. So now this is on its own subtool and I can bring in, so look, I'm going to bring in the gizmo 3D. I'm going to reset the rotation by holding alt and click on the rotation. 
and also center it to this area. And I'm going to bring in the deformation. I'm going to bring in the bend arc. So in the cog icon again, I'm going to bring in bend arc. Uh, this, oh, I have symmetry enabled. I'm going to turn that off. Let's do that again. Bend arc. And I'm just going to change the rotation to be something like that, which is pretty cool. Um, let's go ahead and click accept. So now I just embedded that. That's a quick way to do it. Let's use the these deformers to maybe use the inflate. I'm going to click inflate. And this is pretty cool because it allows you to inflate based on a, an axis. So if I push this one here, it's just going to inflate this area, which I think is working fine. I'm just going to make this a little bit fatter than what they are. Um, let's see what happens if I do it from the top. No. And maybe just a tiny bit here. All right. Cog icon, accept. Let's go back to symmetry so that we can center this or reposition the pivot by holding Alt and just repositioning it so that we can place this again better. All right. And you can see a little bit of the of the thanks coming here. So I'm just going to bring in my move brush, push that in, and just try to place this a little bit better. I'm going to bring in the clay builder brush and then just add some volumes here so that it makes sense that, you know, this this part of the of the body of this creature is kind of like an exposed part of the skeleton, right? So it makes sense to have some kind of bulging area around here, just because you know it, it feels that it has some some more structure. All right. Who there's a there's quite a bit of questions. I'm I'm just gonna get to that. So sometimes I just get lost into this process, um, which is pretty cool. Um, but I'll get to the question in just a second. Just wanna see that everything is working. Um, I think I wanna I wanna have something here from the back of the head, just so so that it balances out the the entire design a little bit more. Um, uh, I'll explain what I mean in just a second. Let me see. Hey, Night Shadow. Thanks for th thanks for stopping by. Oh, that's awesome. So yeah, that um that video in the extra mile is is pretty is pretty cool. Like. Um, myself, like myself included, when when I discovered the the HD geometry back in the day, um, it was like a massive revelation of what you can do with it, uh, and that's really one of the most amazing, powerful features of Zero Geometry HD. Um, happy extruded hip. I just want to say, great, um, thank you, contribution to the sea cause, awesomely cool artist. Oh, thanks so much, man. Um, appreciate it. Um. If yeah, if you wanna contribute, you can just go to the to the link that I shared before. Um, all that, as I mentioned, all of it is going to be part of the um, the donation that we're making at the end of the month. Series vibes from the movie Quiet Place. You know, I haven't actually watched that movie. Didn't I? Didn't know there was like creatures in that movie. I thought it was kind of like a thriller like ghost thing. I, I haven't actually watched it or know much about it. I know it's good. I know it's good. And I know some people that work in that movie. Um, but yeah, I haven't watched it. What is the name of this muscle group's head on the top right corner? Not sure which one you're talking about. Sorry, I must I must have have something here before I actually looked into the chat. Why is it necessary to close holes on the mesh? Um, it's not necessary. 
it's better to do it at least uh, when you're at this stage of blocking. Um, at the end, this is a this is a good concept or a good sculpture, but it's not necessarily a a production ready or something that you can just you know keep refining to you know add uh, UVs and and details and sort of that sort of thing. So it is not necessary to close the the mesh. You can actually leave it open, but in this case, I prefer. <clears throat> Sorry, I prefer to actually have it close so that when I create the the full watertight mesh as a Dyna mesh or, or or just Sculptures Pro, which is something that I'm going to show you um, in the next few minutes, then it's going to be easy for Sievers to just know what's up, right? <laughs> because if you if you leave some parts open and then you have some intersecting meshes, um, let me just try to explain this because it's, it's, it is important to at least know what's the the benefits of closing it or not. So let's say do you have that you have a mesh that is so this is a this is open this area and then you have another one that you sort of like connecting right and it's also open whatever so there's some intersection here and here at the back as well but then this area you might not notice right when you're tweaking the shapes because you, you're inserting different parts uh, you might not notice that this is still open so once you run for example a um, dynamesh it's going to fill that area and it's going to be flat and so you have to go back and and you know tweak that area or add some details or if you run a um, serial measure for example let's say that this white color is going to be the serial measure Uh, serial mesh is going to try to follow the curvature of this mesh until it gets to this open space. So it's going to create something like this, roughly, right? And this is just uh, I'm I'm assuming like you have something like a, like a like a hole in between two pieces that you didn't realize it was there uh, because it is a hole. Um, and then you end up with like a nice looking mesh and you start like detailing these and all that. And then you realize somehow that there is a gap in here or that there is this hole. Um, in order to fix this, once you have gone through the process of retopologizing and start adding details, you have to go back. And it's, it's, it's not terrible, like there's ways to go around it, but I prefer to avoid that. Um, just trying to think ahead um, and avoid this. So that's why I would, I would prefer to close the mesh that I insert. Um, and also just makes it easier for me uh, visually. I don't like to have like open pieces of geometry. Hopefully that makes sense, but that's that's one of the reasons, one of the many reasons, but you can just go without it. Um, how do you push yourself when you need to work faster? Uh, well, this uh, there's like three things, right? <laughs> Let me just show you here before I show you the, the rest. So there's one, two, and three things that you have to consider. One is quality. The other one is time. And if you're working professionally, the third one would be money. Right? So for me, this one is the most important one. <laughs> having something that is a quality um, that is of quality that uh, the rest doesn't doesn't really matter um, the and the, and the reason I'm highlighting quality is because if you do something that is quality like that is a, a good quality project or, or that the result is of, of great quality then then you can charge more just because your work is really valuable right um, later on the track and the time is irrelevant for me at this point just because I have the experience already, or have accumulated certain experience in, especially with these type of concepts and that sort of thing. So I know that I can produce something that has, like you know, certain quality in a short amount of time, right? And that is just gonna ultimately, like if you're freelancing, is just gonna make um, your revenue, for example, be a little bit higher, right? Because you can produce something that is high quality in a shorter amount of time. And because it is high quality, you can charge more money. So the way that I push myself to go back to the question to 
work faster is not necessarily to produce more and more and more. It's more about um, making sure that the quality of the work is there. And if you make sure that you have something that is of good quality, ultimately, as you produce more and more, even if it takes you one month to produce something or two months or three months or whatever, the more that you produce, the shorter this, this gap is going to be, right? So the more that you produce and the high quality of the, um, of the projects that you produce, the less time they're going to take you because you're going to learn uh, shortcuts and you're going to learn tips and tricks. You're going to ultimately become faster at a specific task and that's going to you know, shorten the amount of time that it takes you to produce something of high quality. So I don't necessarily push myself to, to do things faster. I just, I just tend to do things faster just because just because that's how I sort of like evolved in my in my creative process, I guess. Um, I, I don't have to, you know, have everything perfect because what I do is more of a concept rather than a production ready mesh. So I know like at this point, we've done this in what, about an hour, right? So I think at this point, um, I could just take another hour and keep refining it. And of course, if I'm not talking and if I'm concentrated on what I'm doing, it's going to be even faster. But I can take this and then do a quick remesh, uh, project some details, keep refining, maybe going to HD geometry, uh, do something that is really polished in the next uh, hour or two hours, and then go through polypaint and then just produce a concept that um, in the next three or four hours can be of you know, a good quality to present to a, to a director, for example. Um, so that's kind of like my personal experience, how you evolve. If you focus on quality, don't worry about the money. Or, well, try not to worry about the money. Don't worry about the the time that you spend on something. Um, the the more time that you spend, the more things that you will get, you will you will learn. Even if you hit blocks and if you if you hit um, you know obstacles that are actually making you making the project last longer than what you think. Um, everything that you solve is going to be something that you're going to learn uh, or you're going to keep at the back of your head when you work on, a next, on the next project. So uh, concentrate on quality. That's all I can say. And uh, I can guarantee the, the speed will come over time, um, especially if you're producing quality content. Uh, okay, <laughs> let's go back to this. Uh, let's have a look quickly. Uh, what about perfectionism? Uh, yeah, yeah, <laughs> that's something that you have to sort of like balance yourself. Uh, do you speak Spanish? Uh, si, sí, hablo español. Which folder is best for extracting these ZBrush CVPs? Which folder? Oh, okay. Um, I think I know what you mean, side effects. So if you extract the brushes to the um, C brushes in the C brushes folder, which is the installation folder of ZBrush, they will appear in here. So I have a bunch of, like some of the brushes that I have, for example, I have them in that folder. Um, so like my skin brushes, they're all in here within my within this folder. Um, actually, I'm gonna do a live stream about these brushes because some people have asked me how to use them. There's not like a direct, I mean, there is a, um, this is a massive, uh, <laughs> parenthesis of what we're doing but uh, this is basically a set of brushes a skin brushes um, it comes with a quick guide so you know exactly what, what what brush does but because they're not the usual type of click and drag alphas to create details like you would get from I don't know like uh, like the awesome ones that come with XYZ um, I'm sure you're familiar with that um, most of the the alphas that you would expect for this type of detailing is just click and drag uh, these brushes are actually sculpting brushes. So the way that you use them and apply them, they're a little bit different. So I'm going to do a, a, a live stream just about this, you know, micro detailing, but that's a, that's a different stream. Anyway, so you can save your brushes into the C brushes within the installation folder of ZBrush, and they will appear here. So if you create a folder within that um, ZBrush brushes folder, then you can have them all in here. So in my case, I have a folder that is called My Brushes see so this is the this is the actual brush folder that comes with zbrush the c brush folder i created a new folder that is called my brushes with an underscore so it's always at the top in the in the explorer uh, windows explorer i can double click on that and then within this one i have a custom set of folders that i can access for me this is the best way to do it um just because 
I don't use these brushes that I have here all the time. So when I need them, I just bring in my light box, go to my brush, my brushes, and then for example, select the, I don't know, these double action brushes. And I have a few of them here or the rock brushes. And this one is, you know, quite powerful to detail creatures as well, uh, not just to make uh, rocks, uh, but they're all in there. And to load them, I just double click the one that I need. That's pretty much it. So I, that's why I prefer to have them um, in this way. Now, if you want them to appear all the time in ZBrush, so one of the one set of brushes that I have all the time with me is the um, grooming brushes. So I have a custom palette with um, all the brushes that I created for fiber mesh. And this is another pack that you can get from the ZBrush guides. But basically the difference between these ones and the ones that I sh showed you is that these brushes are within the brush presets of the C startup folder in ZBrush. Okay, so that means that every time that ZBrush open, all of these brushes here that you can see, which are for um, dealing with fiber mesh, they're gonna be automatically loaded. So if you want some brushes to automatically load with ZBrush every time that you open it, that's in that's the folder that you should use. Do you use the brush height often as the intensity? I'm not sure what you mean. Zbrush depth. Um, Zbrush depth. The brush depth. Mm, not, sorry, I'm not sure what you mean about that. Um, I use this intensity. That's just to control um, how much yeah, how much depth you're adding into the into the mesh. But I have a style. Well, I have a tablet, so I can control that with pressure. I don't know if that's um, what you mean. Anyway, let's go back to this one and then I'll show you the techniques to sort of like refine this. And we have about 40 minutes, so I'm gonna probably do a quick poly paint for this guy. So I'm gonna bring in the other brush. Um, hang on, this one. I just wanna add something extra to the back of the head just because I don't know, it feels that, I feel like this should have something, something more. Um, and I'm, let me just explain my, the, the thinking process here in terms of the design and hopefully it makes sense. So um, most of the, the parts or the general shapes of this creature are very, oops, what is that? It's too high. Yeah, so it's kind of like pointy. And this is another thing that I, that I mentioned at the beginning about uh, if you're gonna use this type of approach of kit bashing to create monsters and creatures, um, just keep in mind that the meshes that you use to insert might not be you know uh, unified in a way or like visually. So this is what I'm trying to to tweak, right? So all of these shapes are very very sharp uh, in a way uh, visually, and the same thing here for the the face and there's a nice contrast here but this area it feels we're gonna do it with a different color it feels it feels a little bit smoother um, uh, which is you know it's fine if you want to just do some areas of contrast and some areas of you know rest between areas of rest um, that's not necessarily what I'm talking about in this in this case uh, I'm just talking about trying to you know balance it out the design with something that you know maybe stems out like that at the back just to to make it feel more part of this entire design um that is not i'm not talking about the the areas of rest versus areas of um, contrast or areas of details that's this is more about the silhouette and general design um the areas of rest versus areas of details would be i mean this is fine in this case so you have a lot of details in here which is awesome and then you have an area that is quite plain, so it creates a nice contrast. Uh, but that's kind of like the, ne the next step as well. So uh, hopefully that makes some some sense. So I'm gonna use something that is not perhaps uh, very obvious. I'm gonna use this beak. Make sure I have symmetry enabled, and I'm gonna bring that maybe from the other side, like that. Actually, like that. And let's go ahead and maybe scale it down. Just 
try to figure out a good way or a good use for this this mesh. Um, but from the side view, this is roughly what I wanted. Something something extra to enlarge that that part of the cranium. Um, so yeah, so I have that one there. I can just go ahead and maybe split this, split this into another subtool. So that is a little bit easier to to work with. Uh, by the way, you can also do that. Um, you can also split every part into different subtools and still gonna work the same thing or in the same way. And I'm gonna bring in my move brush and I'm just gonna go ahead and play around with the shapes. Maybe into solo mode real quick, just to fine tune the shapes a bit here. So, and again, this is another another thing that I want to, you know, showcase with this uh, workflow and this process, uh, which is basically, if you have like a a beak in this case, or a claw or a head, it doesn't necessarily mean that that is that specific part of whatever creature you're doing. So, if you have a head, doesn't mean that that's going to be one of the options for the head. Right, um, you can use that to make it an arm, like with details. You can just bring in the head and stretch it, and because it has maybe the features of a head, then that arm is going to have some extra details. But it's, it doesn't mean that you have to use them in the way that it was intended. I'm just going to close the beak in here, like so. Uh, let's have a look at it from a different angle, from the front. Even from the back is nice. I mean, this is kind of like what I was hoping to get. And maybe I think I'm gonna go into solo mode. I think I need more, more shapes here at the back. There we go. Um, no more shape, sorry, more more volume so that it connects nicely with the cranium. Um, and you'll see these, the nostrils here of the beak, they're kind of like making a nice, you know, the, like an unintentional nice transition in here, uh, which I can refine further. All right, but um, I think that's looking good. I just want, need to make sure that it doesn't look like a beak. Um, and I'm going to go ahead and bring in my inflate brush. So these could potentially be a problem um, later on. So again, I just try to avoid things, um, try to make my life easier for later on. So this is just uh, maybe too thin. So I'm gonna inflate that. You won't be able to see it. So doesn't matter as much. So I'm just gonna inflate that that area. And now I'm gonna bring in the Dynamesh. So pay attention to what happens. I'm gonna Dynamesh this object. Oops, what's going on? I think I pressed Alt, let's see. Yeah, all right. So I dynamesh that object, right? And now I can more freely sculpt this and, and make sure that the transitions are working nicely. So I'm just gonna add some volume. You know what? In fact, I'm gonna merge this back down. So I selected the body, click Merge, Merge Down. And now this is back like this horn, so this part of the cranium, the, the head is part of the, the original head. And I can just go ahead and very easily merge these things together, as in work on the transitions and make sure that the volume is part of the of the actual head. All right, let's have a look here at the back. And again, if, I'm, if I need to have more geometry, remember the trick is just go to the Sculptress Pro. I'm gonna turn off Polyframe to see what's happening and reduce the brush size. Just add a bit of geometry all around. There we go.
But once you have your blocking ready and you're happy with the silhouettes and everything is sort of falling into place nicely and it's working fine, it's really, you know, just a matter of going over the entire model and, and start refining the transitions, which ultimately in this in this workflow or in this process is one of the, the most important things because you're just kit bashing. If you're not working on the, like if you don't put enough time and, and effort to make sure that the transitions are are fine or are working, then the whole thing is just going to feel like a, you know, like a, I don't know, like a, like a mesh that has a bunch of parts, but none of them actually fit together. They just, it's very clearly a kit bash. <laughs> Let's have a look. All right. I think I'm going to bring in the Sculptress Pro and remove some of this it's intensity. Why is it not working? Hmm. Smooth brush. The smooth brush is not... Oh, hang on a second. I didn't have my smooth brush. Okay, smooth, strong. There we go. Holding shift. And it's going to remove some of this spikiness. I don't want to make it as strong. Okay, I think that's looking more interesting. We can keep refining things. Maybe this volume here is not... Great. And here at the back, I'm going to bring in my move brush again. Just do some more proportional changes. Just concentrating on the, on the silhouette, especially from the side, which is what I was originally trying to balance out. All right, so that's not too bad. I think it's making it more look like an insectoid creature type of thing, which is good. Let's go do a quick save. I'm gonna grab a sip of water and let's see. Um, let's see. Ah, uh, depth depth mask. Hang on a second. So, um, sorry, you, sorry, just missed. Uh, where did you get the grooming brushes? Uh, those are part of the. I'm just going through the questions here. Uh, hang on, there's more actually. I just looked away for a second. Um, by the way, your episode on draw with Jason made me want to learn serious. That's great. <laughs> yeah, Jasa is Jasa is a fun fun guy. Um. We're both, um, you know, live in Melbourne, so we we did a, a nice collaboration back, like maybe two, three, three years ago, and it was quite fun. It's a, it's a funny guy. <laughs> uh, intensity, maybe G intensity, the intensity. Hang on, uh, zero. Blah, okay, so sorry, <laughs> I was just like reading the the comments. Um, so again, this is the pack that I'm using to to build the the, the brush or the the mesh. Uh, if you go to the resources, and you actually if you go to tutorials, should be there should be some something in there. Uh, if you go to tutorials, and you just filter by hair and effects, right? Uh, you can click on this fiber mesh grooming kit, and that will open up in a new tab and that has everything about that kit that I'm using so you can learn more about what it is, what it does, how the brushes work, um, you know the type of brushes that I created to create this this type of things like you know basically you can just go through this and it shows you what the pack is and at the bottom you can get it from here it's 15 bucks um, it's just a bunch of brushes that makes the the working with fiber mesh really really easy at least for me so this is the brush that i actually use for all my fibers fiber mesh work um so i just decided to 
you know, polish them a little bit, tweak them so that they look, you know, the presentation and the icons and everything looks better and release them as a pack. But it's exactly the same tools that I use in my in my work. So there you go. That's the one that I was talking about before. Um, what do you think about sculpting in VR? Um, I love sculpting in VR. I mean, not. I've been using uh, the Vive Pro, uh, which you know, like one of the the big software for sculpting in VR is called Medium. Uh, unfortunately, unless you do some kind of hack that I don't like to do, um, because I don't know how to do it really, is um, you cannot use Medium in in Vive Pro. So I've been using something called Gravity Sketch, which is an in between designing. Uh, it's in between drawing in VR and actually sculpting um, because every time that you draw or that, that you do a, a stroke is actually creating a new piece of mesh so at the end you end up with a bunch of like meshes together it's like a kit bash in a way uh, so it's not like a unified mesh the the same way that you can do it with medium there's another app called um, masterpiece VR which is pretty pretty powerful uh, that is available for Vipro and I've been using that as well it just has some weird limitations like you'll have to pay a subscription just to use some of the basic tools so I'm not a huge fan of that um, but yeah I love uh, working in VR in fact let me just do show you real quick um, let's have a look so here, this one of the latest uh, pieces that I completed last um, last year. This is like a fan art for The Mandalorian. Um, this is all done in VR or sculpted in VR, and then I just composited everything in Photoshop. But all of these pieces, all of these, uh, yeah, the meshes itself, the, the meshes themselves are actually done in VR uh, using Gravity Sketch and the Vive Pro. So there is a well, there's a there's a little gif with the process. Uh, but this is the actual video. So I, it's a time lapse showing how I use the VR. Um, so in case you're curious about it, you can just go to my art station. It's the latest work that I did. Uh, so yeah, this one shows how the, the process of creating this in VR. And then I just uh, send this to Marmoset, add a, add a bunch of like very rough uh, textures. And then on top of that, I did a paint over in Photoshop, you know, to add to add the lights, some texture and some extra details. But you know, for the for the most part, the modeling part is done in VR. So I'm loving the the you know the versatility and how fast this is in VR. Nice model, thank you. Thank you, glad you like it. Do mainstream concept artists use kit bashing more and more than creating from scratch to save time? Uh, it is, it is, yeah, it is, it's a completely valid option. Um, like I said, the, the key with the kit bashing is not only having good pieces to insert, right? Um, if, like, for example, if I leave this one as it is, it's going to be very easy if a lot of people have the same, the same kit bash, uh, resource, it's going to be very easy to see, okay, these hands are from this kit bash. No, or, or the legs, right? Because I, I barely touch those, right? Whereas with the torso, I mix like three different torsos. Uh, with the head, it's just a bunch of different stuff as well, and I keep adding to it. Uh, so that area, this area is more, this area really is more kind of like design or like custom. Sorry about the writing. Uh, whereas these ones are very, are very, very cool. But they're very easy to spot that they are part of a kit bash. So the key with the kit bash is starting or having um, the ability to produce something really quick. You know, you turn around like really cool concepts. But then being able to um, add a little bit of your own personal design, it's very important. So I think this is a this is a good balance. But I would probably, if I have more time, if I want to make this into a like say a proper concept, I would you know refine and and go over the uh, the legs. Um, let, let me just give you a quick example of something very, very quick um, that we could do. So I'm going to just duplicate this, go into solo mode. Um, I can very easily go to the smooth brush, enable Sculptress Pro, and then just remove some of these details that make it very, very obvious that this is one of the, um, the brushes from the pack. Um, I can go to the inflate brush. You know, and just 
try to make this a little bit thicker, right? Which might not go necessarily with the with the idea of the design that you had in mind. But it would spark some ideas on how do you can custom customize it. So uh, for example. And this is just one piece, right? Or like it's only one piece from the from the pack. But you can combine this with other pieces. So you could remove hang on. You could remove this, all these clothes. And just by doing that, you have something a good sort of block out of this um of these legs, but don't, you're not necessarily using all the pieces from the from the kit bash, right? So at this point, you can go ahead and bring in, uh, let's see, legs, where are the legs, legs, um, you can bring something completely different. Let's go for this. This lizard sort of thing. All right. Hold control to duplicate. Hold control and duplicate, and that's how how quick it is to just you know refine uh, or change the design, right? So I can go ahead and uh, bring in my move topological again. I'm just gonna hide these parts inside of this mesh a little bit. And just quickly refine sort of like the placement of these stranded pieces of geometry or volumes so that again it makes sense with the new added volumes that we just added. Right, so there you have it. it it's very quickly, I mean this looks more creepy now, but very quickly we have something that is very different between, I'm going to cycle between the two between this and this, right? Uh, you could potentially recover some of these details and just, you know, go ahead and do it, you know, manually recover those details. But that's that's essentially it, right? Like um, the key with the kit bashing, I think, and this is my personal opinion. And again, to go back to your question about whether uh, mainstream concept artists use kit bash, I, I would say yes. At the end of the day, you just want to try to um, represent or, or try to get into the uh, into the head of the director or whatever client you have that is asking you to do a concept and try to get into their head to see what they they visualizing so that you can actually put it into into a piece of uh, concept so the faster that you do it the more iterations that you can you know do i guess um so if you present this one they might come back and say you know what like i don't like the the legs and say, like no worries we have these ones right um that's maybe that's one way to do it to to view it uh but yeah it's it's a matter of i think in my opinion again it's a matter of figuring out what is the what figuring out a good balance between the original assets that come with the kit bash which are pretty awesome uh, most of the time you get really cool stuff and your design input right because um most most mainstream concept artists, like someone, a professional artist, won't just take the the kit bash and then just put them all the pieces together and say, "There it is." Right? They will they will have a design choice. They will have a design consideration about what is it the design that what what makes this design unique or you know fitting the purpose or, or the world or, or whatever that is being required by the client. Um, so this is one of the things that I would that I would personally do. I would use the the parts as a starting point, do a quick concept, but being able to, you know, being able to um, move away from what's currently in the, in the meshes, it's a good practice just to, to make it your own. And that's the good thing about the, the pack, right? That it, it has a bunch of different things and you can just go ahead and, you know, and keep tweaking and refine them and combine and add different things. So like, I actually like these legs quite more, quite a bit um, more than the, than the originals like that for this creature. I think it looks even 
more scary and weirder. Uh, but there you go. It's, it's just another another process. So we have about uh, 20 minutes. I'm going to do a quick, I'm going to show you how to combine everything into something that you can take further into detailing and do a quick poly paint. It's going to answer some of the questions here. Did you try the updated blender mode coming from zero I was pretty impressed with the quality I haven't actually uh, I haven't actually tried the sculpting in blender to be honest um, I'm, I'm sure it will be really cool I just think zbrush I mean for me it will be pretty hard to leave zbrush with the with the amount of work that I can you know do with it within zbrush uh, but yeah I'm, I'm sure it will be pretty cool and it's good to have different options right Cool. All right. So let's go ahead and go back to the original. I'm going to take the, this, I don't know, the, the fangs, <laughs> let's just call it fangs. And I'm going to merge these down with the rest. So I'm going to merge down. Cool. So now we have a single mesh or a single subtool that has everything that we need. Right. So if I enable polyframe, you'll see that everything is like all the different areas actually let me just think about something very quickly because mm. I do like the weird looking fade all right so I'm just gonna use that so I'm gonna go into solo mode real quick um, make sure perspective is off I'm gonna use the select rectangle and I'm going to hide probably this area inverted and then delete delete hidden and I'm gonna merge uh, sorry merge node I'm going to close holes right so we have those cl those holes closed and in the original I'm just gonna duplicate it just in case put it here at the top and this original I'm going to do the same thing but inverted so basically I'm going to delete this part, delete hidden, oh, come on, delete hidden, close holes, all right, so basically now we have two things, let's go out of solo mode, and we can select this, the fit. And with the move brush, I'm just gonna try to fit this really quickly so that we can move on to what I mentioned that we're doing. All right, so this is just a quick way to get the best out of both worlds having the details and the and the nice structure of the of the legs but also this more custom design for the for the feet cool so let's go ahead and merge this down all right so this is where we at right we're looking thing <laughs> um, so at this point let's say that we're happy with the design overall and you know we have already spent quite a bit of time uh, refining the transitions and that sort of thing. I will just gonna take these. Uh, I'm gonna do a duplicate again. I like to keep an original version before I move on with the next, uh, the next step. And what I'll do is I'm gonna dyna mesh this entire thing. So right now we have a pretty dense mesh, uh, which is you know made out of decimated parts. What I'll do is increase my dyna mesh resolution quite a bit, let's say 750, and click dyna mesh. Hopefully it won't take too long. Uh, some of the details might be washed out. Let's see if the resolution... Oh, actually that was pretty good. So it's very similar. Two million polygons in Dynamesh. So now this is a single mesh. I'm gonna give it a single polygroup, so Control w So this is a single polygroup or a single mesh that we could take further into the pipeline, for example, and, and then uh, do a series measure, project details, and that sort of thing, right? 
but because it is a Dynamesh uh, option or Dynamesh mesh, we can go ahead and refine things, um, you know, in the in the normal way of using the normal workflow of using uh, fiber mesh, S fiber mesh, Dynamesh. Sorry. So we can use the smooth brush to refine some of these areas. You know, work around the volumes here. So at this point, this is just a normal Dynamesh sculpture. And I mean, you can get to this point um, faster than what we did today. But then it just becomes a matter of refining, you know, not detailing, but refining the, the surfaces a little bit before you actually go into into details. Because um, this is something that I that I always say, and I I always go on and on and on about um, detailing in the in the course that I have online, the the extra mile course. So my students are probably sick of it already. But uh, detailing is is nothing. <laughs> detailing for me is so easy and that's why Sirius is you know is is great in what it is um, and what it does because detailing is very very easy it really is uh, with Sirius and using alphas and there's like amazing alpha packs and you can create your own uh, brushes and that sort of thing that's really really easy right and for me that that is kind of like the the last thing I, I would do is to add you know high frequency details and all that sort of thing which makes it super super intricate and really cool the the final object but the the hardest part I think of the design and the hardest part of making something look appealing is is the, the overall shapes and the, the volumes and the secondary and primary shapes so if you don't get those rights no matter how crazy and how cool your details are it's going to be really hard to to get something that is that it looks that looks nice if you don't have your uh, main volumes um, sorted, and that's kind of like what I like to spend most of the time. So now that I have this Dynamesh object as it is, then I, I try to consider a little bit more of the anatomy of this creature or how it would actually work. And yeah, you know that sort of thing. But for example, this area that looks very sketchy, this is a good opportunity to just go ahead and smooth this out. And then work on some of the volumes. Uh, we can bring in the damp standard brush as well. And maybe try to figure out some of the, the faults of the skin or how this um, torso is sort of like wrapping inside is more of a hard shell part of the design so maybe we can go ahead and extend these bits a bit more so again this is not detailing right this is just working on the secondary forms and making sure that design wise it is a solid solid piece so now there's a you know there's a more interesting transition in this piece this kind of like lobster like um, paneling effect here in fact this this area we could just re replicate it with a clay builder brush so we can just duplicate that sort of paneling effect in here So that again, it feels more of a transition. I'm gonna bring in damp standard brush. And I'm doing this very quickly so that I can move on. We have 15 minutes for a quick polyping. Should be all right. But I think I covered what I what I wanted to to show with this um, with this workflow. Again, the, the pack is absolutely fantastic, and most of the Kitbash uh, packs that you find out there in the, in the internet, I'm sure they are of a high quality, and they're really good for for different things. The the hard surface ones are particularly good, especially if you're not a, a hard surface artist and you need to do some hard surface stuff. 
um, they will be of great value. I just think that, and this is what I wanted to cover, that the, the process of creating these sort of things is is more about having the, the ability to produce something quick that um, is structurally sound and it looks good and um, you know silhouettes and volumes and all that is working but also to be to be able to add your own stamp on it or like your own design um, basically taking taking your kit bash um, resource but also being able to add your own voice to it so it's not just um, a replicate of of the original design that is part of the of the asset I don't know if that makes sense I'm just talking <laughs> Okay, I'm gonna add a bit of a paneling here as well on top of the back and deltoid area. So just another paneling similar to what I have in here. But anyway, you can just go nuts with the amount of things that you can do after you have this Dynamish ready to go. So let's go ahead and do a quick poly paint for this guy. Um, just because, just for fun. Uh, it won't be like crazy good. Um, comics, comics legend saying, uh, could you also use mesh by union, uh, remesh by union? Yes, totally. You can do that. Um, the only, like if you go down that, if you do that in that way, if you do the remesh by union, then you basically keep the same resolution of meshes. So in other words, uh, with the original one, which I think is not that one, this one. So if you use remesh by union, basically all you're doing is making sure that you connect and make the, the mesh watertight, uh, but the current mesh is gonna keep this, the same resolution as in what it, whatever it has at the moment. So there's gonna be more resolution here on the leg, but less resolution here at the in the foot, right? Uh, which is totally fine. If you go down this path, then the next step, rather than using the normal Dynamesh process, would be to use a Sculptures Pro, right? So you can start adding details. Um, you can start adding details using a Sculptures Pro, and that is totally fine as well. Uh, it's just different different workflows. I prefer in this case um, Dynamesh. Now that I have enough, uh, like quite a bit of details just because if I keep redynamizing right it it prevents me from going too deep into the details I don't know if that makes sense uh, whereas with the Sculptures Pro I can just add very fine details very quickly straight away and it's sort of like um, yeah I, I can just get into that too fast um, before making sure that all the the volumes and things like this that I've been doing here at the back that um, that work fine all right, so 10 minutes to a quick poly paint, so let's just do that <laughs> really quick. I'm gonna go ahead and bring in my standard brush. And I'm gonna turn that into a sculpting, uh, sorry, drawing or painting brush. Getting rid of the lazy mouse, enabling RGB. I'm gonna switch to skin shade four. I'm gonna try to find a fleshy color for the base, fill object. And then with a large brush, I'm just going to start blocking out some of the main areas of color. So I'm going to go for a darker, maybe more reddish color here for the legs. So with a large brush, um, actually, I'm going to select the entire the entire mesh and I'm going to unify it because right now this is huge, right? This is really, really big. And ZBrush works best in a, in a, in a volume or a dimension of 2 by 2 so I can unify it and now this is gonna work much better in terms of you know all the brushes brush sizes and, and all that they're gonna react better so this is kind of like the same process of the sculpting um, but just adding some some blocks of color I'm gonna add some blue, uh, very, very subtle hints of blue. Um, and just adding blue on top of this red, it sort of like makes it more of a, 
you know, more, more like a zombie type of skin. And I'm gonna go for a this saturated, almost purpley color here for some of the, the darker areas that I think would, you know, um, have less uh, less exposure to the sun in a way. So it's it's kind of like an ambient occlusion manually painted in a way, but um, you know, more thinking about where to put it rather than every single crevice. Here, here at the bottom as well, just to make it darker. And you see, I, I'm not using anything weird or crazy. It's just the standard brush without the intensity and just, um, just color, blocking this out. I think for the for the arms, I'm gonna go for something even darker, and I'm gonna replicate that to the, to the head. So maybe. This saturated purple. See what that. Yeah, kind of like it. And I'm gonna replicate that effect here around the mouth and the head in general. How are we with time? We have seven minutes, so we can just do a bit more of this. You know, play around more with that. Um, and I usually spend as much time as I spend um, blocking out things in the sketch itself or like the 3D meshes as I do blocking out the color. So this is for me this the equivalent, just blocking out where the the main um, blocks of color are going to be, the darker areas and that sort of thing. So maybe these panels could be part of like this dark um, this dark color. All right, and I like to look at the the mesh from the distance as well. In fact, I'm going to. Oh, let's just leave it as it is, because we don't have much time. Um, I'm going to use a dark saturated color. Uh, but this time I'm going to do it very subtle over the entire thing and this is kind of like a, a way to unify those very subtle blocks of color that we just did. Alright, and I'm going to start doing some more, um, you know, just because of the time we have five minutes, so I'm going to do some more detailing here really quick. So I'm going to use the masking options. I'm going to click on mask by cavity. So Sirius is going to mask the cavities very quickly. And I'm going to blur that, blur mask, and I'm going to invert it, and I'm going to hide it. So now I have the mask, but I cannot see it because I turn off the view mask. Right? So with that in mind, I'm going to bring in a color similar to the palette that I established. Like I said, I generally speaking, I spend much more time doing the, the initial setup of the palette, but due to the time constraints, I'm just going to select something like that and make sure it's quite dark and saturated and then start painting some areas more saturation. So right now I'm just painting only the crevices. It's kind of like a hand painted almost subsurface scattering in a way in this in this specific example. I don't want to do it too harsh or like too strongly just because you know um, then I will have to unify it. All right. So if I select something darker like a blue purple color with saturation and just add some more in here. I think that's working fine. Uh, I'm going to clear the mask and I'm going to use some of these colors. Again, this is again trying to unify some of these parts. For this creature, um, let's just work very quickly on the on the mouth. I'm gonna make it really, really dark. How 
How are we doing? Um, okay, three minutes. I reckon we can end up with something cool. Alright, and then for the eye region area, I'm going to go for a darker tone. Like so, even darker, almost black, some of these areas. Cool, and I'm going to select a yellowish color for the eyes. Just going to do a quick paint over here. And maybe even for the little teeth that are visible here. Alright, I think I need to use more of this dark color. Uh, so, just to wrap it up, I'm going to use another um, masking tool in ZBrush called the Pixon Valley. And that is going to give me some variation in color uh, very quickly again. So, let's hide it. And I'm just going to use this dark color in some areas. Right, you can invert it and then use even lighter colors. So that we can light up some some areas of this creature without, you know, doing it, um, without filling it completely, just in certain, certain regions. Alright, I think we can call this guy Don as a concept, I think it works fine. Just gonna darken up this, the hands a bit more. and potentially the claws in here, or the entire feet. All right. Done. Let's do quick save, last minute questions, and we wrap it up today, guys. Um, So look, you. hey, it's you. Hey, yeah, it's me. <laughs> There's some polygon stretching on your final details. How to solve it? Uh, it's some stretching on the final details. I uh, remember that I turned it into fiber uh, dynamesh. So uh, with dynamesh, you can just redynamesh, and Sirius is gonna figure out the topology there. So you have no restrictions. You can, uh, since this is a dynamesh, you can create horns now and redynamesh, and it will be, it will be there, no problem. Do you have your custom UI online? I do have a few, not this one. I haven't updated the the file of the 2020 because this one has like some of the tools from Sirius 2020, like the history, recall brushes and that sort of thing. So I don't have this one available online. Uh, I could do it. Um, if you go to the Sirius Guides website, there is a guide on how to create your own custom UI. And I would recommend that much more than just downloading someone else's UI, uh, just because the UIs are very personal the, in the way that you work and the, the tools that you use. So I'm I'm happy to share this one. I just don't think it's going to be as beneficial as if you create your own. And that's why the tutorial that I have in the Sirius Guides is all about how to create your own and maximize the, you know, the productivity, your productivity with your own custom UI and how to do it and, and, and the thinking behind of creating your own custom UI. So I would recommend that before trying anything else. Um, Should be that cool. Cool, thanks guys. Glad you like this creature. Um, sorry, but are you going to paint uh, by cavity? I don't know if you said that. Um, Javier. Sorry, but are you going to paint by cavity? So I, I use the paint by cavity. Uh, it's not paint by cavity. It's just called mask by cavity. So if I, um, let me just hide the poly paint real quick so you can see what I'm doing. 
So if I go to the masking palette and I click mask by cavity, Sivers is going to analyze your entire mesh and figure out whenever there is kind of like a crevice. Uh, I don't I don't know exactly what's the magic behind it and how it figures it out. It's just probably like a um, curvature map in a way. And it figures out which areas have the crevices and the mask. Uh, sorry, the crevices and the, um, the cavities. <laughs> and it will just mask these out, right? So after you have these, you can just go ahead and uh, blur the mask. Right, so it just is not as strong, or you can make it sharper and make it more stronger, like or stronger, uh, and then you can inverse that and hide the mask. So now whatever you do is going to be only applied to the mask, right? So if you, for example, want to actually enhance the details of those crevices, um, not necessarily with paint, you can use the the move brush, for example. I'm going to hide the mask and just because everything but the cavities is masked, you can push them in, for example. I don't know, that's just uh, another thing that you can use and that's the mask by cavity. So hopefully that answers that question. Cool, alrighty. Uh, then I, I will lose all the other final details. Any other solution on the polygon stretching? Uh, yeah, you can just use Sculptures Pro. If you have a polygon that is stretching out, just use Sculptris Pro. Um, very quickly again, if I have if I have this final mesh here, and let's say it's a DynaMesh object, and then I have something like this that is stretching, right? Uh, but then I have some some details in here. And you don't want to lose these details when you redynamesh. So I'm losing some of the, the sharpness of these details, right? Redynameshing it. So instead, what you can do is two things. You can increase the dynamesh resolution, right? And it will fix these areas. Or you can use the Sculptures Pro. So you hold Shift, enable Sculptures Pro, and then just add more details or fix this stretching. And that is basically going to add more resolution depending on the size of your brush. So even if you want more, more resolution, you just reduce your brush size, hold shift, and that's just gonna add even more details. So that's why Sculptures Pro is really cool for you know quickly detailing. So right now I'm just adding resolution only in the areas that I want to, to detail basically. So hopefully that answered the question. Let's go back to the to the creature and we're gonna wrap it up here, guys. So I gotta go. Uh, but thank you so much for stopping by um, again just want to reiterate the fact that this creature was done just uh, in the two hours of the stream because um, you know that the, the whole point was to, to show you the, the process of uh, you know concepting and creating something like this from the pack and how to customize it and make it your own rather than just using the, pa the parts uh, so just as a final wrap up if you go to the Seabrush guides it's the latest guide. Uh, by the way, this this at the end of this week, there's going to be a new guide coming up, uh, which is about the Sirius Compositor. So a couple more things, uh, tricks that I want to show you with the Sirius Compositor, and they're pretty cool. Uh, but anyway, if you go to the Sirius Guides website, uh, kind of like the first slide that you'll see in the homepage is for the Creature Pack, and this is the just click on this button, and this is the this is the um, the pack that we're using. So you can just download it. It has all of these meshes. You might recognize some of the ones that we use in today's live stream. Um, and just go scroll to the bottom and get it. It's 20 bucks. And again, all the all the profits, whatever, like anyone that buys this is basically donating <laughs> because all the profits from this pack is going to be donated to the CFA, which is the Country Fire Authority in Victoria, uh, well, in Australia, and to the Victoria volunteers for the firefighters that are fighting the, the horrible... Um, fires that are happening in Australia. So uh, this is a, again a collaboration between me and, and a few other uh, awesome ZBrush artists that basically donated all of these meshes to create this pack that has over a hundred meshes um, and those are the ones that we use in today's live stream. So again just just know that you're gonna get if you get it you're gonna get some pretty cool uh, meshes to work in the same way that we did today but also you are helping or you're donating your money to a good cause because all the profits will, will go to the to the CFA so um, thank you so much guys um, I'm glad that you enjoyed the the live stream 
Um, and if you have any questions about today's uh, live stream, you know, feel free to reach out in the in the social media. Um, I'm also going to probably we don't know I, I don't know exactly when, but I'm hoping I can open the doors for the extra mile course um, pretty soon. I seen at the end of this month, maybe maybe the next one. I'm not sure yet. Uh, just for you, for you, those of you that don't know much about it, uh, this is the the 3D Concept Artist website. I have a course called the Extra Mile, and I go for the entire process of how to produce awesome, like looking images from from zero. So you can just go to the uh, 3D Concept Artist, and it has you know all the all the modules in there. You can see you know Substance Painter, Keyshot. ZBrush obviously, um, presentation and, and all that. So I'm going to try to open up this, um, open up the doors for this course late uh, this month or probably early next month for the first intake of 2020. Um, so if you're interested, just keep an eye on your email uh, if you are part of my newsletter and I'll let you know. Uh, but that's about it, guys. Thank you so much for tuning in and happy ZBrushing. I'll see you next time. Next week, we'll, we'll continue with the cassowary. <laughs> all right, so take it easy. I'll see you. Bye.